Hey guys, Bruce from Server Factory here, back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be going through the process of building a simple one new server, the Supermicro 5019S-MR. These kinds of systems are very popular with our customers who are involved with web hosting and light load virtual machines due to their versatility and cost effectiveness. The 5019S-MR is a one new rack mount server that uses the Supermicro 813 MFTQC-R407CB chassis. This chassis has four hot swap 3.5 inch drive bays and a four port 12 gigabyte per second backplane sporting SAS and SATA drives. The motherboard that's going in the system is the X11 SSHF, which is a single socket micro ATX board sporting Intel Xeon E3 1200, V5 and V6 processors, as well as 6th and 7th gen Core i3s, Celeron and Pentium processors. There are four DIMM slots supporting a maximum of 64 gigabytes of unregistered ECC memory at 2400 MHz. Now our customers actually ordered four of these systems and we need to ship these out today, so let's get on with the building. First step of course is to install the motherboard into the chassis, so let's get started with that. Once you've got the motherboard installed, and we've made sure that we haven't missed any standoffs or screws, we'll install the processor and RAM. For the processor, our customer has gone for the E3 1220V6, a quad-core CPU clocked at 3GHz with a max turbo of 3.5GHz. This is a pretty popular processor because it offers good priced performance and power consumption, perfect for web hosting applications. Cooling the CPU, we're using Supermicro's 46P heatsink designed for the E3 1200 series processors. Now for the RAM. The customer has opted for just one stick of 8GB of DDR4 ECC unregistered memory, leaving plenty of capacity for upgrades in the future. We're almost there. Now we need to install a 1TB Seagate Barracuda SATA hard drive. The drive bays do actually support SAS drives, but with this configuration, we are connecting the backplane to the SATA ports on the motherboard. So there would be no point in using SAS drives with this spec. If the customer wanted to take advantage of SAS drives, then there is a slot for a full height PCIe add-on card, such as an HBA or RAID card. However, this customer has requested that we install a dual port gigabit ethernet card in this slot. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we need to make sure that everything is connected up properly before we turn it on. We need to connect power, SATA cables, chassis intrusion and the front power connector. Now at this stage we should quickly boot up the system to make sure that we don't have a faulty motherboard. Because it would be a big waste of time to nicely cable manage the system only to have to undo all of it to swap out the motherboard. Once we've successfully booted to the BIOS and we know the system works, we'll start cable management and make sure everything's nice and tidy for the customer. One eternity later. And there you have it, a fully built server ready to be tested. The customers actually ordered four of these systems, so we should probably get cracking if we want to ship these systems today. So thanks for watching this build video. If you like this video, then give us a like and leave a comment down below on what kind of content you'd like to see from us in the future.